It's 10 a.m., March 5th, 2023. After your morning coffee, you think, hey, I haven't checked to see what's new with Stable Diffusion in a while. I bet they have some cool new stuff. So you go to your social media of choice and, oh my god, did they rename Stable Diffusion as ControlNet or something? Because literally everything here is about ControlNet. But when you go to try the shiny new toy for yourself, you realize there are whopping 10 preprocessors and 8 models to choose from, which is downright intimidating. That's where I come in. I'm Silicon Thaumaturgy, and today we're going to deep dive into ControlNet so you can make the best use of this amazing tool and control the composition of your AI art. Today's video will cover OpenPose. While OpenPose is, in my opinion, the most intuitive among the preprocessors, there is still a lot to cover, and I'm going to give you in-depth testing results and figures that you've come to expect from me. First, let's start with the basics. When you use the OpenPose preprocessor, it looks for human figures in the image you feed it, then generates a skeleton consisting of specifically colored dots and lines. The central dot connecting everything is located between the shoulders. Above it, small branching lines show the location of the eyes and ears. Below, the first line segment for each limb marks the boundaries of the torso, which are the hips and shoulders. The next two line segments are for the arms and legs, with the outermost dot representing a wrist or ankle. Unfortunately, the version of OpenPose used in ControlNet does not incorporate hand or foot positioning, which is one of its weaknesses, so if you want precise hand position in your image, you'll have to use MultiControlNet to get it. OpenPose also does not convey any information about the background or any non-human objects, which can be either a blessing or a curse, depending on what you're trying to do. For this, you can either try to use your prompt to specify these things in the image, or use MultiControlNet if you're looking for something very specific. Naturally, it wasn't enough for me just to say that OpenPose makes skeletons based on human figures. I mean, what's the fun in letting something work when you can push it to limit and see where it breaks? First, let's talk about the most common case, partial human figures. When OpenPose attempts to identify a human, it identifies it based on the points, not the lines. It starts from the central point between the shoulders and works its way out. If a point is outside the frame, OpenPose will guess where the next point is. However, any further points attached to that one will not be detected, regardless of whether they're in the frame or not. For example, if the elbow is outside the frame, then the wrist will not be detected, even if it's within the picture. Since all other points are connected to the point between the shoulders, OpenPose will not detect anything if the subject's shoulders are not in the picture. Next, I wanted to figure out how small the figure OpenPose could pick up. But instead, I decided to take a walk through a tranquil meadow. Just kidding. OpenPose continued to pick up the figure, but with somewhat degraded accuracy, until the figure was shrunk to 220 pixels, or a little bit over 20% of the total image height. I would guess that the 20% of the image height is more important than the number of pixels here. I was curious if OpenPose would have trouble with toddlers and babies because their heads are much larger relative to their body and limbs compared to adults. Realistic depictions of both toddlers and babies worked fine, so you should have no problem detecting people of any age with OpenPose. But what if you want to use OpenPose on your cat, Sir Fluffy Kittens? Well, unfortunately, all the animals I tested, including dogs, cats, and monkeys, could not be detected by OpenPose, so you'll have to use another model for your pet. Interestingly, OpenPose could also not detect blocky humanoid robots. On the other hand, demi-humans such as mermaids, harpies, and monitors worked well, though occasionally they lost the end of their limbs during detection. For centaurs, only the front set of legs was detected, and it did not match the actual horse's legs, so it looks like it assumed that the body was actually the leg instead. Finally, I tested a variety of cartoon styles to see what worked. Anime generally worked pretty well, and some Futurama characters were detected also. Everything less realistic like Powerpuff Girls and Spongebob did not work. Weight, along with guidance, are the two critical parameters for ControlNet. They both determine how much influence the base image has on the output, but in different ways. Guidance is what portion of the steps for the image generation have the ControlNet image used for them. Even when guidance is set to zero, there is still some impact on the final image compared to an image generation without ControlNet. I interpret this to mean that ControlNet will always be used for at least one step. In contrast, weight is how strongly the map is used when generating the image. If weight is set to zero, you will get an image that is identical to the generation that would occur if ControlNet was not used. Like all ControlNet models, adherence to the map, in this case the OpenPose skeleton, is dependent on the particular values of weight and guidance. 
Setting lower values gives the AI more flexibility to modify the pose, which can make it look more natural in some cases. If weight and guidance are too low, you won't get the particular pose you're looking for. Fortunately, compared to other preprocessors, going too high for weight and guidance on open pose isn't that damaging to image quality compared to, say, Heed or Canny, but can still force the subject into an awkward pose. Unfortunately, the correct values for weight and guidance will depend upon the pose itself. More unusual poses, like this yoga pose, require higher weight and guidance to get correct. More common poses make it easier for stable diffusion to accurately portray the pose. If the particular pose you want has one or more limbs in an unusual position, you are going to need to keep weight and guidance high to ensure you get that result. Now that you understand what weight and guidance do, let's talk specifics about the ranges for these variables that get the best results. First, let's talk about guidance. When Stable Diffusion generates images, it takes random noise and gradually transforms it into an image we can appreciate. During this process, the major details are established first, and then minor details are added later. Because the major details of the image are submitted early on during image generation, lowering guidance has little effect until you get below 0.5, which is 15 steps for these examples. At this point, some of the more knowledgeable listeners might be asking, what about ancestral samplers like Euler A that add noise back in during image generation? Wouldn't that increase the impact of guidance? That was my initial thought as well. However, at 30 steps, the impact of guidance for Euler A versus DPM++ 2M wasn't noticeable. Then I thought, maybe if it was 150 steps instead, it would make a difference. But no, even at that high of steps, there is no substantial difference. Interestingly, the newest sampler, UniPC, is not impacted by guidance at all, which is probably because it converges the fastest among all the samplers in as few as 8 steps. Due to having little or no impact for most of its range, I would not recommend using guidance as your primary variable for controlling ControlNet. Which takes us neatly to weight. As I mentioned before, the precise values for weight are going to depend on how unusual your pose is, but here are some guidelines. Generally, you can reduce weight down to around 0.8 before the output starts breaking free from this open pose skeleton a substantial amount of time. Once you start loose cohesion though, things go downhill very quickly. At 0.75, I estimate you get a matching result about 3 quarters of the time. At 0.5, it's maybe 1 in 3. At 0.3 and below, getting something resembling this open pose skeleton is basically pure luck. For more challenging poses, you could need to set weight above 1.0 to get the full pose, as we've seen with the yoga pose. For most things though, keeping the default value at 1 should work fine. Much like guidance, I didn't see a significant impact on weight from either samplers or steps, so these recommendations are universal across those conditions. And now, for the moment you've all been waiting for, it's time for the charts. These charts are meant to represent the accuracy of open pose with a standard human pose. If you use something hard like a yoga pose, the accuracy will be lower than estimated here. For the first chart, we have UniPC at 30 steps. Since UniPC is not impacted by guidance, the only effect here is for weight. You should be fine until around 0.8, with accuracy falling off until 0.3, after which it is basically pure luck. This next chart is for all the samplers except UniPC at 30 steps. At a guidance of 0.5 or above, the chart is identical to UniPC chart because guidance really isn't a factor at these levels. Once again, accuracy starts being lost below weights of 0.8 and open pose is basically useless below 0.3. When guidance is lower than 0.5, you start to see a decrease in accuracy as well. 0.4 to 0.3 can be hit or miss, and at 0.2, open pose is really going to start to struggle. Any lower than that is going to be pure luck. Now that we've established ranges for weight and guidance, how do we make use of this? First, I would recommend keeping guidance and weight at 1 initially to see if you get decent results. I would run batch counts of at least 4 so you aren't relying on the luck of a single C to make this determination. If you aren't getting the pose you want, bump up the weight even higher. One of the advantages to open pose is that high weight and guidance won't damage image quality too much. If you feel like the results look forced or unnatural, you could decrease the weight so it isn't forced into an awkward pose. I would only touch guidance at the very end to fine-tune the image that you like. Let's say you have a half-formed arm or something out of place in the pose. Lowering guidance could help stable diffusion incorporate that into the picture better by giving it more time to work on it. Last but not least, let's talk about what open pose is capable of outputting. 
Basically, you can get anything that has a humanoid form to work with OpenPose, whether that is babies, aliens, or Optimus Prime. When your prompt does not include a humanoid entity, OpenPose begins to struggle. The closer the subject is to a humanoid form, or the more easily the subject can be molded into the pose, the easier it will be for OpenPose to get it right. For example, prompting for a tree gets way better results than prompting for an airplane. For subjects that only partially match the human form, like say a mermaid, the results will be deformed and the texture, in this case fish scales, will be applied on top. In the worst scenario, OpenPose will just put a person, or a silhouette of a person, in your picture regardless of your prompt. Sometimes, this can be incorporated into your picture well, like as a statue at a temple or by a pyramid, but more often than not, it is going to be obtrusive and out of place. Fiddling with weight and guidance can help improve this, but realistically, why would you? If you don't want a humanoid form, there are other control net modules that can outperform OpenPose, so use them instead. For being the simplest among the preprocessors, there was probably a lot more depth to OpenPose than you expected. To review, OpenPose is great at capturing the general position of the body, but cannot capture the precise position of hands and feet or information about the background of the image. OpenPose is robust when capturing realistic human subjects of all ages, when the subject is at least 20% of the height of the image. OpenPose is robust at higher guidance and weight settings compared to other preprocessors, which allows you to be more forceful in order to get the particular pose you want. However, like its detection, OpenPose is also limited to outputting humanoid figures and they put them in regardless of what you want. I hope you learned everything you wanted to know about OpenPose. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe so you can see my future tutorials on other ControlNet modules. Till next time!